Hello, I'm Steve from Rhino Max Campers and I'm here to introduce you to our latest creation, the Lost Track 16 foot hybrid tourer. Now, this is part of our hybrid tourer range and you may well ask, what is a hybrid tourer? Well, it's the term we use for something that is a cross between a hybrid camper and a caravan. So what we've actually done is we've taken all the technology that we're famous for in the hybrid campers and put it into this, but it's full height. It's wider than a, than a hybrid camper, but narrower than a caravan. So the end result is you've got something that's really comfortable like a caravan inside, lots of room, but toes like a camper, easily maneuvered, lightweight. The biggest difference, I suppose you could say, would be the body width. So the body width on this is 2.1 meters. Now, a normal caravan would be around about 2.5 meters, and a hybrid camper would be about 1.9 meters. Now, because we've obviously taken this up to full height, whereas mostly hybrids would be pop tops, we've also spread the wheelbase out slightly for stability. And I can't tell you how well it tows. It blew me away this morning when I towed down here. Really, every bit as easy as our hybrid campers. Now, we're down here at Kenilworth um, on the Mary River, and we've got a beautiful spot, and we're gonna take you through some of the features on the actual camper itself. So let's start now and get right into it. Now the hybrid tourer range comes with both a full external kitchen and internal kitchen setup. So we'll show you the external setup first. I think the first thing to do is let's put the awning out and get some shade. The awning sets up pretty quickly. Um, it simply winds out by putting our winding bar in here and the legs are actually attached inside the awning. So the first thing is to get our winding handle out, which is stowed in this nifty little storage compartment at the front of the front box. So let's get that out. Then we just insert it in here and start winding, away we go. So we've come quite a way out, and then I just pull the legs out, set it up. And then just continue winding. So it'll tell, that's it, that's completely out. So we're out about 2.5 meters from the actual camper by, f I think it's 4.5 meters on this awning. So you've got a pretty good area which is completely in the shade. Now, we also do the options of awning walls, full annexes, there's a centre rafter bar for when it's raining, um, anti-flap kit bars, a whole range of stuff so you can expand your outdoor entertainment area if you so wish. Now, let's now take a look at the kitchen. One of the great features of all Rhinomax campers is the kitchens. So let me show you how easy this is to set up uh, very, very quick. So first of all, we just undo the latches on the door and then the kitchen slides out very easily. Expandable bench just folds over. There are no catches or clips to put on or anything like that. That's pretty much it. Now, if we look at what storage we've got here, we've got Two large storage drawers above the kitchen. Now, these are quite good for storing vegetables, fruit, anything like that, as they stay quite cool because they're behind the insulated panel, so not exposed to any sun or anything. They just slide back in. Then, underneath the stove, we've got a huge cutlery complete storage drawer. Underneath the sink, we've got another compartment in here, which is great for dishcloths, washing up liquids, anything like that. Basically, we're trying to utilize every single bit of space that we've got on the actual camper. Now, the stove is a Thetford three burner stove. So 
The reason we've gone for that is it's it's better to have two small burners and one large so you can get a large pan on rather than have four small burners. So this thing, all the burners are sunken. So they're lower than the level at the top here. So when you get wind, it doesn't tend to blow the actual burners out. The grill on the top just clips off for easy cleaning and it's electronic ignition. So very, very good practical stove. Now, another feature on this part of the kitchen is the tap. So this tap, as with a lot of um, a sort of camping taps if it was stuck like that you wouldn't be able to get a kettle or a water bottle under it to fill it well with this one you simply turn it over turn the tap over and now you can put your kettle your water bottle whatever it is and fill it there there's loads and loads of room also good for if you want to wash your hands or you've been to the beach you want to dry you wash your legs off so that's the tap now in this section here we've got our pantry fridge slide which just glides completely out on its stainless steel runners now in the back here we've got a pantry that opens up it's got a utensil drawer in the top and if we slide that back down below it's got a really deep storage compartment for you know pots pans that kind of thing anything that you've got that's deep and awkward will fit in here now you then have uh, my Coolman 85 litre dual zone fridge freezer. So lots and lots of room in there um, for carrying food or beers or anything else. Now I did say to the guys at Rhino Max before I came out, could you put some beers in the fridge for this photo shoot? I'm just gonna show you what they've put in. Water. I mean, come on. So we'll drop the fridge down lids and again it just slides in effort effortlessly when closing now even though you've got um, quite a big storage area in the kitchen as it is if you felt the need where you wanted to say have another fridge or you wanted more storage space or anything else around the front of the camper this front box here is a complete tunnel boot right through. Now we can also, we do options in here of, you know, uh, fridge slides, barbecue slides, um, you know, any kind of storage slide. So whatever you want in here, we can also put in to come out on this side to adapt the kitchen out this side if you so wish. Okay, let's take a look at the front uh, end of the camper layout now, and we'll kind of start right from the uh, your tow vehicle back into the front box. So the first thing you'll notice is we've got a, a Cruise Master um, 360 degree DO35 hitch. Now the hitch is actually sunken in the front of the drawbar. Now the reason we do that is so that you can open whether it be a cruiser or a prado or whatever or a ute as you can see you can get full access to the back of your car even when you're still hitched up so quite a handy feature that we've got our jockey wheel on here um, and this winch here is for the spare wheel so again with the spare wheel it's it's located underneath and we have a winch system which will lower it and raise it so you don't actually have to drag it and lift it to get it on and off gas bottles they hide behind this lockable box here so i'll just put that up there that's you can see you've got two four and a half kilo bottles or four kilos that locks up we've got two jerry can holders on the front here and also in here as i showed you before we've got a whole storage area down here for you know fishing rods tent poles your winding handles any of that stuff will fit in here then the main box itself is full tunnel boot right the way through so that's got space all the way through there you know so any large items that you want will also fit into there now the cargo basket option on the top is, is really, really good. So if you want to carry any wood or you want to carry dirty tops, ground sheets, that kind of thing, they will fit in there. Not only that, but this, bo this cargo basket here has been designed. So if you want to carry extra jerry cans, you can line six in there, strap them down. So if you do want it, extra water, it's perfect for that. So again, I think you'll agree, a pretty good front end of the actual camper.
Okay, let's take a look at the back side of the camper and show you what's on it. So we've got two storage compartments here. So this one, as you can see, this is a great space for a Weber barbecue generator, anything like that. Then this one, you might think, where do you put your tables, chairs, you know, all the bigger items. This compartment's huge. So you can stow a lot of stuff within there. Then moving further back, we've got a water pressure reducer. So if you've got access to town water, say on a campsite or something, you can plug straight into here and this will reduce the pressure to a safe level for all the fittings inside the actual camper. Then we've got twin water tanks. So this comes standard with um, 210 litre water tanks um, and we do have options for other tanks as well. Now, we also on top of that have here an external water draw facility. So you can plug a hose into there and we could literally run down into the creek or we could stand a jerry can bucket or whatever at the side and it would pump straight through the actual camper. Now our creek draw system goes straight through to the hot water system in your sinks. It does not go into the tank. So it bypasses your tanks, hence giving you less chance of any contamination if anything was to arise. Then this is the this is the flu for the hot water system, so you take that off, any dangerous gases come out here. 240 power inlet, so if you, again, if you've got access to mains power, you can plug it straight in here. Um, and this at the back is just your vent for your composting toilet. This has got a carbon filter in it and it just vents out through the back. So as you can see, you know, you've got a reasonable amount of features on the back side of your camper as well. At the rear of the camper, up the top, we've got a security light, so that just flicks on and it'll illuminate everything out here. This one's also got the option of a, um, a rear view camera on it, and you've got four lights at the back, two at the bottom, two at the top, so you've got, you're gonna be quite visible from behind at nights or in dusty weather, things like that. Okay, let's take a look inside the camper now and show you some of the features internally. So we'll pull out the double step, which is pretty simple. And then this is the new Rhinomax dustproof door. So we'll open that. We'll just latch it to the back. And now we've got entrance inside. So let's go in and actually have a look. Now here we are on the inside of the camper and the first thing that you'll actually notice when you step in here is actually the sensor space. It's, it's just massive for the size of camper that it is. It actually feels like a lot bigger van than what it actually is. Um, now if we take a look at the layout from internally, we start up here at the bedroom area. So we've got a full queen size bed in there and we've also got storage compartments either side of the bed, three large storage compartments either side there. We've got a padded bed head with the twin speakers in the module up the top here and a set of light lights up there as well. We also have two reading lights at the top end. Now they're on gimbals as opposed to the normal stalks that you would normally associate with reading lights, but they're quite a bit better than the stalks. You can swivel them, you can tilt them up to the ceiling, drop them down towards the bed. Very, very good. Now you've also got Sirocco fan up near the upper cabinets here. And a roof skylight so this is this skylight opens up it has a blind and a fly screen on it it's great at night time for looking at the stars um, and as I say in the daytime you've got a blind on there so it can still be open letting air in but not letting the actual sun through the other big thing about the internal is, is how cool it is in here now because all the walls and ceiling are made of a 30 millimeter thick fiberglass insulated composite panel it keeps the internal really really cool and the other great thing about these is they just wipe clean so nice clean lines easily cleaned after all you don't want to spend your holidays cleaning your van do you so this makes it really really easy 
Now the next sort of section I suppose you could say is this middle section so let's go through that now. I'm sitting on a five seat lounge we've got a swivel table here so that just swivels straight out and comes in here so we've got a double seat at that side a triple seat at this side. Now, like I say, this van's really designed for couples, but it doesn't mean to say that you can't have your friends round and have a game of cards or a few beers or a glass of wine, whatever that may be. Full leather seats, another double glazed window here. This is great for cross breeze, it's opposite the door, so you get a fantastic cross breeze again inside here. This camper's also got an option of an air conditioner in it um, and a complete lithium power system that will run that. Now we do lots of different power systems in them now but all vans come standard with lithium um, to start with. Next we'll move down to the actual kitchen area. Now as with our complete range of campers now all come with lithium power plants as standard and the Rhinomax digital command centers as standard as well. So everything can be controlled through the digital screen touch screen here on the side of the cabinet or you can actually log in to your phone and it'll give you the same screen. So I can control everything through my phone as well. So let's say for instance, I wanna switch lights on. I would just press the light icon and then I'll put kitchen lights. So you'll see the kitchen lights have come on. I can switch the kitchen lights off and they'll go off. Go back to my home screen and I can actually put it in various different modes because this is a full automation system as well. So the camper is controlled very, very easily. It also comes with a complete set of manual switches if you like going back to the old school ways of doing things and just pressing a switch. So again, the latest technology, the best power systems that are available are actually here in Rhinomax campers. Down at this end of the camper, we've actually got the internal kitchen and um, ensuite. So we'll take a look at the kitchen first. So an L-shaped kitchen um, and it has a bank of storage drawers at the bottom here. So you've got four storage drawers there. We've got another bank of storage drawers on this side. These are quite large, these drawers. And then in the corner, we've got um, like a storage cabinet here. So you can put some of your larger stuff into the actual corner there. Um, up above, you've then got another bank of upper lockers here. Now, that alongside either side here, we have more storage lockers. So you've got quite a bit of storage internally round about this kitchen area. A lot of usable bench space. So this one's got the Corian bench top option on it. And we've got a mixer tap at the back and it's got the um, sink in fill there as well on this particular model. So if you're not using the sink, you can put this infill in there and use it as a bench space. Now, also, this one's got the option of the twin induction uh, hob on it. Comes standard with the single hob, but this one's got the twin hob on it. Um, and here we have the ensuite. So inside here, if I open this door, we've got a full size shower and we've got the nature's head composting toilet in there. There's also um, a fantastic fan in the roof, an extractor fan, so that comes on automatically when you actually open the door and go to the loo. And you've got um, storage cabinets in here for your shampoos and everything as well. So I think you'll agree, it's a, it's a pretty good layout in the actual internal. So what we were trying to achieve was that cross between the camping lifestyle and the caravanning lifestyle, which is where these hybrid tourers sort of fit. So we've, as I say, we've got lots of room inside, just like a caravan and the internal, we've got a kitchen and everything else. It can also have internal fridges in it, microwaves, whatever anybody wants, but we still have the full external kitchen out there as well. So for those people who want to go out in the bush and camp and everything else like that as well. So that's it, the hybrid tourer. What a really great piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. 